All right, so today's lab is going to be the experimental determination of the rate law for the iodination of acetone. And we're going to be using the method of differential rates again. So our setup is essentially going to include some hydrochloric acid, HCl, acetone, and iodine. We're going to mix these all in a flask. And upon adding the iodine, we are going to see a color change. And as soon as the iodine is added, we start the timer and see how long it takes for that to clear up. And we record the times. So our experimental setup then, we have a little table here. And what we're going to do is we're going to vary the concentrations of each of the reagents. Uh, note that in each trial, the total volume is 50 milliliters. So in trial one, we're gonna take 10 milliliters of each of the reagents except for water. Now the water is used here primarily just uh, as a buffer to make sure that we can achieve equal volumes, uh, equal total volumes in every trial. Uh, water itself is not a reactant. Uh, in trial two, we're doubling the acetone. In trial three, we're doubling the iodine. In trial four, we're doubling the HCl. And a fifth trial has um, just kind of a varied amounts, different amounts from what we had previously. Some things to note. In this reaction, it is known that iodine is zero order. So just right out of the gate, we're letting you know that. And when something is zero order, that means the rate does not change based on the concentration of that reactant. So whatever my concentration of iodine is, um, the rate, the change in the concentration of the products does not, per time, does not change um, if the concentration of iodine changes. The iodine, the, hyd the hydrochloric acid, are both present in relative excess. The concentrations of those are much, much higher than that of the iodine. And what that means then is we're gonna have essentially a, a constant reaction rate throughout. Um, when you have such an excess compared to one limiting reactant, then we can go ahead and make that deduction. So the way that we're gonna calculate rate for this lab is simply by taking the change in the concentration of the iodine divided by the time. And it's negative because the concentration of iodine is decreasing. Once we have uh, the rates for all four trials, we can go ahead and apply our differential method and plug in the values that we have. We will be able to calculate the concentrations. Now remember, we, this is a mixture, so the initial concentrations of the acetone, of the HCl, are going to have to be recalculated when they plugged into this uh, because they are now put in within a solution where the total volume is 50 milliliters, so you have to recalculate your moles and then redivide by the volume. And hopefully you'll be able to experimentally determine the uh, orders, the M, N, and P, although like I mentioned before, N is already known. Okay, so I've got my materials out. I've got a flask for mixing. We've got two test tubes. One of them is filled with just regular deionized water. This is our, gonna be our color control. Uh, this is the type of clarity we're looking for. This is the test tube that we're gonna put our experimental mixture in. And I've got labeled pipettes for each one of the reagents. And it's really important we don't have any cross-contamination, especially in such a concentration-sensitive lab like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up all the reagents except for the iodine. And um, I'm gonna do the iodine last. And then when I do the iodine, I will fill them again and start timing. All right, so in the reaction flask, I've got 20 milliliters of water, 10 milliliters of the acetone solution, 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. And I have just measured out 10 milliliters of iodine that I'm going to add and start the timer. Then I'm gonna swirl. And then I'm gonna pour into the test tube to the relative same depth as the other. And we're gonna wait for this to clear up. Getting kind of close. I'm 
we're gonna say that's done there. So that was four minutes and 30 seconds. So that was trial one. All right, this is trial two. And in trial two, we have 10 milliliters of everything except for uh, the acetone is doubled. So the acetone is 20 milliliters, 10 milliliters for everything else. So I'm gonna draw up my iodine. And as soon as I, I add the iodine, we're gonna start the timer. And that's just about done. All right, so uh, I didn't read off the time. At the end of trial two, trial two took two minutes and 21 seconds. So now I'm gonna start trial three. And in trial three, we have 10 milliliters of everything except that we're doubling the iodine. So my pipettes don't hold 20 milliliters of iodine. So I've already pre-measured out the 20 milliliters in here, and everything else is in the flask. And you know, like before, we'll add it and we'll time. That's about done. All right, so that was trial three. Trial three had the 20 milliliters of iodine, and that's about nine minutes and 44 seconds. Okay, this is the start of trial four. In trial four, we are doubling the hydrochloric acid while retaining 10 milliliters of everything else. So in this flask, I have pre-added everything except for the iodine. So here comes the iodine. Pretty close. That's about done. So trial four, two minutes, 22 seconds. All right, so our fifth trial is going to be a random combination. Uh, now, if you were here in lab and everybody was doing this lab, everybody would have a unique concentration, set of concentrations that they would come up with on their own. But it's just me doing this, so you this is the one I'm gonna do. So I've got my, what I've done is I've added 15 milliliters of acetone, 15 milliliters of acid, and 15 milliliters of water. So I'm gonna add five milliliters of iodine, still retaining a total volume of 50. That looks done. We'll call it a minute and six seconds.